Daily Tech News Show is made possible by its listeners, every single one of you. Thanks to all of you, and happy holidays. This is the Daily Tech News for the Daily Tech News Show for Wednesday, December 28th, 2022 in Los Angeles. I'm Tom Merritt. And from Studio Redwood, I'm Sarah Lane. And I'm the show's producer, Roger Chang. I, I, I said Daily Tech News Show because this is not a show about news. This is one of our special holiday episodes it's our first attempt at a reminiscence episode, and we're not going to reminisce about our own holidays. We're going to talk about our shared experience working at Tech TV. We know a lot of you watched Tech TV back in the day. Uh, you may have followed one or more of us from those days uh, right down to this this very show here. So we thought it'd be fun to, to talk about like how we met each other there, how we, got and there. How we yeah. worked together, and all that sort of thing. Um, who's going to start us off? Uh, I can. Um, I think of all three of us, I am the one that probably started the earliest, and I started in the... <laughs> you, you either did or you didn't. Well, no, I mean, like, it's... <laughs> it's I, quite I, possible. <laughs> History it's, will never know. I don't no, want to say anything too I, crazy. But I Roger started at Tech TV before. You two knew each other yes. from college. Yes. But you were Roger like, and I were in the same broadcasting program in college right. and and we knew each other. We, we we you graduated in 98, right, Raj? Yes, correct. Yeah, so same. Maybe. And and yeah. I mean, so we we but uh, but I went to work somewhere else before that and um and and Roger was at Tech TV when I got there and it was it was sort of like, "Oh, I know you. Hi." <laughs> you know. But so yeah, Roger, so yeah. but yeah, what was it like when you got there? I I started as an intern back in the summer of 98, uh, actually the beginning of summer, so the beginning of June I started, and it was the weirdest thing because I remember going in for my intern interview to get a position, and I wanted to get a position with the web group, and uh, I interviewed with the head of web at that time, which was Lucia, and I, I don't know if either one of you remember her, but uh, she was very intimidating. Her and uh, Ali Hosseini, they were going through and they were kind of giving me the third degree, of me and along with a, another individual, about what they needed, what they planned to do, and what they expected out of us. And while they were talking, she had to get up, uh, Lucia had to get up and leave and uh, figure something out uh, for, for the website. While she was away, <laughs> Ken Marcus, at the time, all these desks were right next to each other. Ken Marcus, the, one of the producers at uh, Screensavers, is like, hey, do you want an internship? And I kind of looked at him, and I said, "He poached yeah. you." Yeah, he poached me from web <laughs> to He's go like, into look, TV. These guys are being real hard on you. I'll take you. And it's like, yeah, I, I was like, yeah, totally. It's like, yeah, just show up here next week at this time, oh, and uh, we'll we'll orient orient you, and it'll be great because we you know we need interns. We're launching in two weeks. They really emphasized we're launching in 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 in, in two weeks. We need as many people as we can because there's so much work to be done. It was the most hilarious thing. So after my internship, which was about two and a half months. Well, wait, hold on, hold on. Did yeah. did you end up getting offered the web thing at all, or did they? You know, how no, did that end up? They poached me. They poached uh, Ken Marcus. Like, yeah, I'm taking him. Oh, and, so when uh, when she came back, he's like, sorry, he's gone. Yes, yes. yes. I took him. <laughs> yeah. And lesson I, lesson to all: don't leave your wow. own intern no, I had meeting. No idea. No, no, or that lesson, intern's gonna get poached. Don't have everyone sitting two feet away from each other because they can hear each other's conversation. Don't leave right, Roger right. unattended. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, and at the end of the summer, they decided to hire me as a PA because at an open position, I knew eighty percent of everything, and they needed someone right away. Mm hmm. Um, I was working at Half Price Books. I was an assistant manager in charge of, uh, of stocking, you know, so I was handling ordering the remainders uh, and things like that uh, in Austin, Texas. And my friend had moved out to San Francisco and said, jobs are falling from trees out here. Uh, you should come out here. So she went on the San Francisco Women on the Web mailing list. Uh, it was it was an email list and started forwarding me job descriptions. Uh, one of them was for working at a place called Surf Monkey, which made an Internet Explorer uh, browser bar that would uh, make your your browsing kid friendly. Uh, another one was at Future Media, uh, working at one of the Mac publications, and the third one that I, I got in, that I decided to respond to was ZDTV, uh, and I got offered jobs at all three, 
but I took the one at ZDTV because I was the most interested in technology, radio, television, and it was all there. So I started as associate producer on the web for the screensavers. And the way I met Roger was my first day, I believe it was September 8th, 1999. Uh, they told me, well, one of the things you'll need to do is take uh, the question from the screensavers and turn it into web content. Roger here will give you that information in Lotus Notes. Uh, and so, <laughs> oh, Lotus Notes. And so Roger was literally the first person I had to work with. There were others that followed, but that was the, the first person that I was like, okay, who do you spell your name with a D? Because it's spelled with a D here in Lotus Notes, and he was like, "No, it's I don't know why that's like that, but that's not that's not how you spell my name." It was very, it was a very, it was a very interesting <laughs> thing. They didn't change that until my final year. It was yeah, R O R O D G E R. It's the weirdest <laughs> thing. Well, so when I got to Tech TV, I had I while uh, I was in college. Um, when Roger and I were in college at the same time, I was interning at the NBC affiliate, which is no longer the NBC affiliate in the oh, Bay Area. Yeah, right. But at the time, it was KRO and TV. And I had an internship there, and I was working uh, sort of on like this documentary with this great producer. I loved it. Uh, you know, it was, it was awesome. And I kind of had a job lined up for when I graduated. And that is, extra, you know, I got really lucky, good timing, you know, I ingratiated myself with the right people. So I kind of had a job. And uh, it was doing sort of new media, uh, web documentary kind of, there, there was a um, local programming section, which I'm very sure Cron doesn't have anymore. But uh, at the time, it was... Uh, you know, you had the Bay Area Backroads and, oh, yeah. you know, all those yeah. folks. Anybody who doesn't live in the San Francisco area is going to be like, I don't know that show. But, it, you know, pretty beloved uh, group of um, uh, a sort of news magazine, 30-minute type package shows. So I was doing that for a while. And while I was, um, while I was doing that for, gosh, I guess it would have been, well, if I graduated in 98, 99, 99 so almost the better part of three years and kind of people kept getting either fired or they would leave and I would get promoted because they would just be like, well, maybe Sarah can do it. <laughs> you know, <laughs> like the really young kid who just graduated college. Right, so, right. so I, I kind of got into a position where I, I, my resume actually looked pretty good um, considering that I didn't have all that much experience and I had just been interning early. So Tech TV... I uh, actually, um, uh, I, I applied for a job at Fresh Gear, mm -hmm. and I got the job. This is before I ever started at the Screensavers, and my, my current employer at the time, they were sort of like, ooh, if she leaves, we're a little screwed. So they just like offered me a raise to stay, uh -huh. yeah, so I did. Okay. Uh -huh. So I was like, well, that's easier, you know, because like, I don't even know if I would like the new job type thing. So I turned down the Fresh Gear job. Interesting. I think, I think Becky Worley actually interviewed me hmm. uh, way back in the day, and you know, and so, and I think, I think some of the tech TV folks who, uh, who sort of, some of them had even sort of been through the rankings at this local news station that I was at, and so people sort of knew each other, and I got the impression that everyone was sort of like, I can't believe she turned down this job. Mm -hmm. Well, turns out Peter Hammersley was one of the people who was. Um, in the mix um, in my local news station before he worked at Tech TV. And he he was, was a producer on Bay Area Backroads, right? He was, yeah. yeah. And and he knew uh, one of the producers that I was an intern for really well, and she vouched for me. And he, at the time, was at Tech TV, you know, as a, you know, he was an executive producer. He was an executive producer, producer yeah. Overseeing, yeah. overseeing things. I mean, he could... He could basically get somebody hired if he wanted sure. to type thing. So uh, the screensavers were ramping up... Um, uh, quite, quite, I don't know, quite a few positions, it seemed like. Oh, yeah. I, I was not just one person that they hired. It was They like, were expanding the staff, yeah. Yeah, me and 10 other people type thing. And I got hired for a role, and I think I think a few people who worked at the station were like, yeah, let's, you know, she did turn down that fresh gear role last year, but let's bring her in. Um, and that sort of... So, so he reached out all... to you for that? Yeah, no, I, yeah, yeah. I don't. I don't even. I mm -hmm. don't know that I would have known yeah. this otherwise. But I was sort of. I was a little bit, <laughs> at least in the HR mix at that point. 
Yeah. So yeah, I remember I, I got hired and I didn't really know what was going on. I, I knew what's weird is that my cousin, uh, who's a little bit older than me, but she used to work at tech TV. In fact, Roger, you probably knew her before you ever saw me again after college. She was a TD technical director. Oh, so I was familiar. Okay. Can you not with, say her name or? Well, uh, Kelly Crefield. Oh, okay. That's my, that's my cousin. Um, right. She and I did not work there at the same time. She had left. She went to CNN. But, mm. but um, she was she was kind of like you know, cutting her chops, you know, in the control room at Tech TV. So she, I knew from her that it was like kind of a pretty cool place, and you know, a lot of stuff was going on. A lot of things were changing. So yeah, I showed up and my first day I was like, I know a lot of people from college <laughs> on this show, the screensavers specifically, like people running the cameras, people in the control room. Oh, yeah. I had a lot of them. I knew everybody. I was like, this is crazy. You guys have been here this whole time. Because well, I thought after graduation, we all just said bye. Like the the, the funny thing wins. about both these stories is that it, it, it shows just how difficult it was to find people in San Francisco at that time. The, yeah. the reason that they were willing to hire some guy who worked at a bookstore <laughs> out of Austin uh, was was probably, you know, sh sure, I, I'm sure I was a decent candidate, but also uh, there, there weren't a lot of other folks you could find. I, um, and and I, I think it's telling that both of you were sort of you know, not you ended up in in a job that wasn't the one you originally went for. You know, it wasn't Fresh Gear. It wasn't the uh, intern with the web group, uh, and and I had to come from halfway across the continent. I I I distinctly remember sort of the vibe of the place because so you have to remember this is the time of the dot com bubble, and so everything was very mm -hmm. every the company had it. The company staff had a a uh, unofficial Deadpool where they would basically rate who's the next person that's going to leave for an for a new startup or a web company or something like that because there were yeah. people leaving we were getting goodbye notes at least once a week at least once well, a week for for the better part of six months that never stopped because for a while it was everybody's finding jobs with like crazy stock options yes. or wonderful salaries and, yeah. and this and that and tech tv was a small thing it was owned by ziff davis who you know they, they were owned by softbank uh, so they were part of this big corporate conglomerate. They weren't throwing money at it. Uh, you know, they they were spending on it. They they were willing to lose money on it in order to get it up and running. But they they weren't like some of these dot com startups that were just tossing around money like like wild. Uh, and so you had people leaving for that until you didn't, and then you had people leaving involuntarily. Right? Yes. It switched from people leaving to take sweet jobs to people getting laid off like in a heartbeat. It was also, and part of the, this is, I, I think, because so many of us were, I mean, maybe not, you know, I mean, I was right out of college. Roger was right out of college. Tommy, a couple years, right? But, I mean, it, when you're, when, when you're. <laughs> yes, just a couple. Not, no, I mean, you're not that much older than me, but. I was but, eight years out of college, I guess. But I mean, when yeah. I think of, you know, the, the early days of Tech TV, it was like. I'm like, yeah, you know, you know, you have a salary, you're living in San Francisco, that's expensive. But I mean, I also had roommates and oh yeah. It, you know, you're eating ramen a lot. And <laughs> it, and like that was all fine because you're young. And I think that, you know, to to kind of look back on how much work some of us put in. I'm not, not even talking about myself specifically, but just how much work was put into a lot of these projects. Probably pretty underpaid staff. Uh, oh, that's, yes. that's that's uh, that's that's just I, that's oh, not we, men's we were words. all we were all paid much less than most other people yes. working in the Bay Area uh, and in similar levels at so similar ages. Uh, no doubt about that. The However, I never felt that way. Because I had been living in Austin making 21000 a year, and my starting salary that I negotiated, I was like, well, I, can, I can't take less than 30000 I got 30000 for the associate producer level because I pushed for it, and I felt like I was swimming in it. Rich. Uh, because even with the higher cost of living of San Francisco— you know, I I had I had had no extra money in Austin, and so, so suddenly I had 
I was making $9,000 more a year. Granted, some of that went to rent, but I ended up, uh, I got a promotion because my boss left after three months and I got promoted into her job. Uh, and so I took the extra money I got from that promotion and, and found a studio apartment. It was an attic apartment. It was really small, but it was, it was, I didn't have to have roommates. Uh, so I, I yeah. always felt like I was living the luxury life, even though we still weren't paid that much. I would, I, I'll have to say that, uh, when I started, I, it, I didn't find out till later that someone said like you actually qualify for uh, uh, income assistance. Prager, San Prager did that. Prager, he yeah. he got he got. Um, uh, uh, I remember he, he he said this at the time publicly to anybody who asked. He he qualified for assisted housing uh, because of the amount he was being paid. I said like, man, if I knew that, I wouldn't have lived in the last place. I I got I had to leave um, because I was paying. I did wasn't paying a lot, but I was living. Not far away, but in a very inconvenient location. Uh, right. And my landlord would lock the door at like 9 p.m. So I had to get home before 9 p.m. It was the oddest what? thing. What? That is yeah. very odd. Yes. And so. That's <laughs> <laughs> not a good rental agreement. And you didn't at have all. a key? Well, yeah. it was the chain on the door because I lived mm, in the in law mm, unit. Mm. And so that was the only way to get in. I and see. They would I see. So uh, after that, I found my own place. When, Not sure that's legal, but yeah, whatever. Yeah, you know, seems, listen, seems I was in my I was in my early twenties. I didn't know what I could get yeah, a I, get I away what with. I, what I was all supposed to be able to do. I mean, when I was in my early twenties, I was definitely living with roommates. Definitely living in like you know, I I lived in a um, I can't remember what they call that, but where you you don't you you just have a room, oh, like a boarding sunlight? house boarding house oh, boarding where house. you just have a room and there's other people who have rooms and then you share the kitchen, you share the bathrooms with everyone else in the house. Yeah. I mean, that's how my roommate experiences have been. I never had like my own ensuite <laughs> like bedroom and bathroom just to myself. Oh, I'm Actually, not, I mean, this, I have this is like a house of like eight people. Yeah. Oh, wow. And yeah. and you're not roommates. You're each paying directly to the landlord for uh -huh. your room Right in, the, right, in the house. I, yeah. I will yeah. say, bouncing off on what Tom just said about like living the large life. Uh, that was in Austin, not San Francisco. The, the, the life, so to speak. I was awestruck when I got, when I had, was an official employee because I thought yeah. myself, this is my first career job. And I was so intimidated by everything. It's like, this is a broadcast you know, company, cable. Uh, but like, you know, they have a master control. They're like people with years of experience. Oh, yeah. Like, Money is writing on the stuff that I do that I don't screw up. And so I was very nervous for like a year and a half that I did. Oh, my you know, gosh. I screw was things so up so nervous. badly because yeah. it was a live show. And I said, Roger, there's a we don't even have a 10 second delay. So watch your mouth. And the website <laughs> was put on the air. Uh, which was a new thing. Not not everybody was doing that. And so I was like, the things I write on the web are going to show up on, tel on national television. Um, mm -hmm. I also remember, the, though, realizing my first realization that it wasn't as big as you think uh, was when I was able to justify slipping a link to my website, subbrilliant.com, into one of the articles. And then I waited for all the huge traffic. <laughs> and I got like four clicks off of it. I was like, oh, OK, this isn't necessarily necessarily as right. crazy as that. <laughs> I, it was oh, gosh. Th this is the great thing about that uh, about uh, at the time it was ZDTV before uh, before Paul Allen bought it and changed the name but there was so much to learn but there were so many of my peers that were kind of not not in the same boat but in a similar level of learning on the job and it was great because we had a lot of people who in senior positions who were very understanding. And mm -hmm. I remember when Josh Gingold talked to me, he was the old uh, uh, producer for Screensavers, he said, Roger, I don't care if you mess up on my show because at the time I had to take care of Call for Help and, and Screensavers. I can lose something on my show. Just make sure that Call for Help's taken care of because we had a new producer and she needed some help, trying to, some runway to get up to speed. It's like, you know, do what you can to help her. I, I can manage it. So, you know, you know, if you need to split your time, you know, wait it toward that show instead of my, mine. And it was so amazing because he was very, very mentor-ish in, in, a, in a way like he's like, you know what? I, we screwed up on this. That's great. But I have a better producer because of it. Because now that you've went through this, mm -hmm. you know, I, I, something blew up on, on, mm -hmm. on one, of the sh uh, one of the segments. It's like now that we've gone through this, 
we know what not to do next time or what to do better next time. And I thought that was so cool, right? I thought my head was going to be missing, you know, by the end of the, you know, by the end of the work day. And here I was, was giving a pep talk. A but learning also, experience. Yeah. And I, and I thought like, <laughs> to me, that was such an unusual thing because in all my jobs, I was used to, if anything blew up, you get yelled at because that's what you did. You know, when I started at Tech TV, I, I I had quite a bit of experience with live television because I had worked for this local station. And um, even though I was mostly working on more sort of packaged news magazine shows, you know, which is not live, it's, you know, you kind of just put everything together ahead of time and, and make it a 30 minute show type thing, which lots of shows still do. Um, I, I did work in the newsroom um, quite a bit and I became very quickly disillusioned, like, wait a second. So the 11 o'clock news is the best one. You know, those are like the best anchors. That's actually the one that you want to be on. But that means you have to work until midnight. And that's what you do. You know, and I remember even like as like a 20 year old being like, well, hmm, okay. I mean, I could do that for like a little bit, but it doesn't really seem like something you will like want to like go for unless you were the anchor of the show you know, making lots of money, which I was not even even thinking about that. But um, the disillusionment was mostly, I, I liked the live aspect of everything, but I was just like, gosh, news is so bad. <laughs> you know, if it bleeds, it leads type mm-hmm. thing. And, you know, so I would write these little blurbs, you know, right, 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 right. You know, I was just a, you know, I was basically producer writer behind the scenes, you know, just writing things about, oh, here's who got shot at this uh 7-Eleven last night and, you know, here's the update on, you know, the war that's going on at, you know, whatever was happening in the world at that time. I was like, well, this isn't fun at all. And then um, when the tech TV thing came around, it was like, well, you know, I remember people being like, well, how much are you really into like tech? And I'm like, a lot, actually. I mean, just as a hobby, that's definitely my thing. I just never knew that I could just go to a network where I do that all day. I thought that it was either like news or it would be like some tech thing, but not both. So tech TV was, it was like, it was like someone handed me a gift and said, would you like to talk about the things that you're interested in all day (laughs) and also get paid to produce segments on those topics? And I was like, Yes, I'm good. <laughs> there, and there then, you know, and it like, I'm still doing it for today. There were times where I was taking products home to test and it's like, oh my God, I'm at a job that's letting me take home $1,500 worth of computer equipment to test and then write about and produce a segment and then take it, you know, back to the, the studio to go on air and talk about it. It's like, yeah. what a weird job. What a weird <laughs> job it is to like literally take equipment people would kill for like you know, like n- like un- unrevealed technology that you got to play with before anyone else and then write your thoughts on it and then you know yeah. do a little do make a little it into something that thing. is helpful for other people and I, I, yeah. I was like really this is like the most bizarre thing it's like so cool but it's like how did i get this job i don't really know well, like any good uh, VH1 special, uh, we're going to turn to the dark things that happened uh, shortly. But uh, before we do, uh, I want to remind you, if you, you want to know something about our time at Tech TV, you can, you can send us an email. We'll, we'll answer it. Feedback at DailyTechNewsShow.com. And that's when it all fell apart. <laughs> uh no, I I, 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 I oversold this. I'm laughing it's not be because that. that's not really what happened to any of No, us. but I do want to put out here that, uh, and, I, and I don't know if y'all agree with me or not, uh, but I felt like the entire time I worked at Tech TV, which was, you know, from when it was ZDTV in 99 uh, until it got bought from Comcast uh, and, and merged into G4 in 2004, uh, everyone complained. Everyone complained. Everybody liked working with each other, but everybody complained about, ah, this company and uh, why are they making these decisions? And it got, and especially when it got into the layoffs, I always felt the vibe was like, this place is so messed up until the day we were all gone. 
and then suddenly was like, oh, tech TV, the best years of our lives. We never really appreciated what we had uh, back then. Like, like do you, I think that's fairly normal, honestly, to be to always be complaining about the thing you're doing at the time, but then look back on it fondly. Do, do you feel the same way? Kind of. I mean, so I was I was part of the, the folks who, who did join G4 and moved to Los Angeles and at the time, that was like a huge thing where I was like, wait, so I can keep my job, but I have to move to L.A. And that was, you know, there was a little bit of, you know, sort of a personal life struggle going on there. But I but I went and, um, you know, so so that next chapter for me kind of it continued with some of the tech TV some people, of the same people that yeah, I knew, yeah. you know, and I and I liked very much. But but only like, a you know, a, a small fraction of the people that I had gotten used to working with and. I do get that question a lot of people being like, you know, what was so special about tech TV? And it's like, I don't know because you're right, Tom, we all did complain and yeah. it was, it wasn't run all that seamlessly. Most of the time, ah, they, they took the instant oatmeal out of the kitchen. I well, can't believe these cheap people. <laughs> what, yeah. Or just weird, but you know, like, I don't know, format changes for shows, yeah, you know, where yeah. everyone would be like, what is happening? But, uh, but it was also, I don't know, and I think I think the the time and the fact that so many of us were young. Not everybody was like twenty two years old, but there were just a lot of young people who yeah. were like they wanted to date each other. Yeah, <laughs> they oh, wanted to yeah. hang out on Friday after work. I, you know, we were all kind of like a gang. You know, and well, I don't. I have never had something like that since. Well, you know, it's weird. Someone brought that up to me. I had a guest on, and he he was used to do it. He he came from a, a net, network TV background, but he was talking. It's like your operation is very very interesting. He said like everyone is on good terms with each other. Mm -hmm. You hang out with each other. Mm -hmm. You're like friends with each other. It's like in cable TV that never happens. As soon as you're out the door, you're private life begins and mm -hmm. you know it's like right. i'll see you tomorrow and it's like the fact that you guys are now going to a bar having worked eight hours in the same day with <laughs> yeah, each other and, and you really just want to keep hanging out with these people yeah. and, and that was like, very normal i mean i had friends that were outside of tech tv but i would say the majority of my social life was my tech tv people and i didn't realize how abnormal or unusual that was until I went into other uh, production companies where I was like, you know, contract or, or short term. Mm -hmm. And it, that wasn't the case. And it was just like, I, I guess it is kind of weird that because we all went to school with each other, we all went to work with each other. We just naturally had the same sort of groupings. Well, and, and I think as someone who didn't go to school with any of you, uh, uh, at least until I started hiring people from from Austin to come into the to the company, um, I, I think there was just something about the age, right, where it felt like a continuation of like, oh, yeah, when you're done with class, you hang out with your classmates. Oh, yeah. uh, and even though I was older and had been out of college for longer it it just the the atmosphere permeated uh right and and i i'm not any different in the fact that i think everybody that i hung out with for the most part until i went to cnet uh were were the people from work partly because i I'd, I'd moved across the country and i had i had my friend who had sent me the job descriptions and a couple of her friends that i would hang out with i had one other friend i knew from austin who had moved out there that i would hang out with Everybody else were people I knew from work, including my eventual wife, who I met uh, because I was doing ZDTV radio and she was in charge of ZDTV radio. Uh, so, so yeah, it was in some ways it could probably sound like a bad idea to be so insular. But it, I think the complaining was part of the bonding, if that makes sense. Right. Yeah. It was all of us getting together after work and saying like, Oh, can you believe Wangberg is making that decision? Or why did Hammersley tell us to do that? It's like the, the typical complaining about the boss, not that either one of those guys were particularly awful. They weren't. Uh, but, but it's just that, that sort of like, ah, uh, the management, why are they doing that? Well, it, the way you always do in any job you have. Yeah. It reminds me when you leave class and you're with a bunch of other classmates, you're like, Oh, do you remember professor so-and-so or did you have that class today yeah and, yeah and you might love the professor but you got that thing that you're like yeah, ah, you, you, you know the, i can't the, believe she does a, that there's a bonded experience and what's interesting is and i really mean we hung out like marcus buick one of the audio guys he would throw a monthly uh, um 
uh, 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 Iron Chef party. And he would have a theme and everyone would bring food. And it would just be like a huge excuse to have a party at his place. Or they would do regular camping trips. Every quarter they would go up to Tahoe. They would go up to uh, 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 the Russian River. You know, it was a thing where people still <laughs> stayed connected after work. It wasn't like, well, I have my work life. I have my... And right. even though we weren't no. a startup, yeah. it was a very startup-y feel. And I think startups yes. have, have similar vibes to them. I, I yeah. definitely had to. Oh. I mean, th- there were definitely people that I bonded with more than others. It wasn't just like, oh, I now have 30 best friends. Yeah. That's, you know, that's, it never really works like that, <laughs> even in real life, outside of work. But yeah, I mean, I, I some of my still like absolute best friends I met at Tech TV and... We spent a lot of time, kind of like you're talking about, Roger, working together, certainly, and like helping each other out and seeing how the other person is like good on the job or maybe needs some help and, and then, and then hanging out afterwards. And it was something new. I think that was the other thing is like this television wasn't new, but this kind of television was new and, and, uh, the internet wasn't new, but putting the internet into television wasn't new. And I'm, I'm constantly uh surprised when i think back I'm like oh we we were the first ones rolling chat live uh on on a, mm-hmm. a you know something that's totally normal now that was my we, job we solicited emails that roger yeah. would then write the answers to that i would edit and publish and put on the web that leo and yeah. kate would answer well you and, know, just, like, and just the content in general you know kind of going back to the whole like yeah. are you are you into tech or not it's like i remember when i worked at the news station beforehand, it was like, oh, these are veterans and I can learn a lot from these people, but they're tired. <laughs> and it's not about like, there's no like tech slant on the local news. Imagine it's just sort going of like, into one of those producers. Yeah. Imagine going into one of those producers and saying, I got an idea. I want to send people cameras, uh, get them to install software uh, and connect the camera to their lap, to their computer, to their desktop, to their computer, uh, and then we'll have them uh, call us with video, and then we'll have them on our show. No way. There's no way they would. They would be like, first of all, that sounds way too complicated. And then, who are these people? Why are we putting them on air? Like, right. that would or, never. Or even flown. just me being like, hey, uh, producer of local news, um, I'd like to, you know, give me three minutes. And put me on uh, uh, on the set, and I'm just gonna like walk through how to like defrag your computer. <laughs> right, right. You know, yeah. and it's like, gonna hey, be so be helpful. Like, like everyone's gonna love me. Like they'd a, be like, "What are you? What talking is about? defrag? B. Why is anyone in our audience gonna care? Uh, and like, and who are you? And no. I, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I mean, it, it's 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 so fascinating. You, you say that because one of the things, one of the proudest things I I'm that that I am about the work I did over there was that like when people talk about like, Oh, our show touched people's lives. We got feedback directly from viewers that said that much. I, I still remember getting emails from the middle East, from, uh, uh, from the Caribbean, uh, from the Southeast of the United States where people say, thank you so much. You know, you have helped me solve a problem that has been like, because computers were still a very mysterious, you know, uh, a contraption, for most people at the time, you didn't, ha- you didn't even have... Like, you think uh, things are buggy now, people. Yeah. My gosh, yeah. They were so fiddly. I, I, I mm-hmm. mean, when I did the house calls, I literally went to someone's house and <laughs> fixed their problem. And it was just like, hey, this is... It's simple for me, but like a lot of people was life-changing. And I didn't really appreciate that. Until I mean, I one of the best stunts the screensavers ever did was to install an operating system live. And it took the whole show. In fact, I'm not not even sure it was done installing. They did did a live install of Linux on the show, and I'm not. I think it took more than an hour. Oh, it definitely no. It definitely took more than an hour. Yeah, and just the uh, the community that we were able to build because we built it from scratch. Like we 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 had people or fans who wrote in, but they were the first people we gave those netcam part of the netcam network. <laughs> yeah, netcam network too. And people had to be tech savvy enough to install, open up their PC, install a card, yep. close it up, install the software, make sure it worked, plug in the camera, make a call, call yeah. us, and it was just like it was just chat so with Dan involved. Mitchell to get yeah. it all set up. And I yeah. mean everything that we see right now on CNN, MSNBC, Fox, or whatever, where they have someone call in through Skype 
or yeah. Cisco's, whatever that program. Uh, 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 this is mostly Skype these days. But Skype, it, or uh, Zoom. It might even be or Zoom. Or Zoom. Now. Yeah. I mean, I just like, yeah, we started that. Like, we did it. The picture was really small, and we had to put a graphic <laughs> over it so people didn't realize it was a small. Square. I had to maintain that page, the the one that it, that told people like, uh, if you use it, if you use it, yeah, I think the in fact, I'm pretty sure the way it was is like, download this unless you use an Apple computer, then you oh, have yeah. to download this one. <laughs> yeah, I never, um, I was not a Mac user until I left Tech TV. Even for a couple of years after that, I was like, mm-hmm. I'm just not a Mac person, which is funny because I'm so a Mac person now. Um, but uh, yeah, I was like, I was very like, oh, God, who uses Mac? Oh, so there's, that just makes me think of overhearing, um, oh, I'm trying, Jerry Day, because uh, I sat in the screensaver section, even though I worked on both shows uh, through through large parts of my time there. Uh, the, before I moved into the office, I was sitting in a cube. I heard Jerry Day raving about like, because he used a Mac. He was one of the few people who used a Mac. Like you have to install Sherlock. Sherlock is the grail. Have you not installed? Like he was convincing people to install Sherlock, uh, which, and, and that's how I discovered Sherlock. In fact, that's how I discovered a lot of things was just overhearing people talking about them. Uh, and of course now Sherlock is, is not even a thing, but it, except it's used as the term for when Apple steals a function because of a- Apple eventually put the search that Sherlock did into the operating system and killed uh-huh. Sherlock. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I'm, and I remember Google was the same way. I think I just heard Leo telling someone about it and saying, we should probably look for who, who these people are and get them on the show. This, this search engine is amazing. It's way better than Alta Vista. And it's just, it's just incredible to think how many of the things that are just, perfectly normal background information to technology were were new then yeah 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 in in fact i I remember specifically sometimes because before i was ever on the screensavers as somebody that you would see i was a producer behind the scenes uh, for a couple years really or the better part of a couple years and you know, I, I would be assigned to like, okay, you're going to do this segment with Leo or Patrick or, you know, whoever. And um, there would every, every once in a while, you know, let's say Leo would be like, you know, I, I have a good, I have a good tip, you know, like a Mac tip. Um, and like, yeah, like, like two to three minutes type thing. And so it'd be like, okay, Sarah, you make that, make that segment look as good as possible. And I'd be like, but I don't have a Mac (laughs) and I don't know what he's talking about. (laughs) Uh I can't do it. Um, And you know, life is very different now. It is even if someone were to be like, Hey Sarah, you want to do like a windows 11 tip? I'd be like, uh, well, all right, I'll figure it out. out. Yeah, Yeah, yeah. I, 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 I can make it work. But um, it, it, it all seemed very daunting back in the day. You kind of stayed in your lane, I guess, <laughs> what you were good at. <laughs> I know, haha. Literally in your case. Mm-hmm. Um, I remember being excited about little things like that. Uh, the, I remember, in fact, I remember the first time I got uh, wireless networking going in my house. And I was right. able to, to actually surf the internet uh, from my couch on my laptop. And I felt, as Allison Sheridan always says, like I made fire. I was like, oh my <laughs> gosh, I'm not, I'm not plugged in to anything. I'm, but I'm surfing the internet. I'm on the, I'm on my DSL connection, uh, without any, uh, without any connection to it. And I remember, uh, talking about that, uh, you know, it was like, oh, I did it. I got, I, I put in the card and I, I got the wireless router up. Uh, and, and Chris Perillo was just like, oh, welcome to the internet. <laughs> it was like, okay, fine. Yeah. It took me a little, you know, an extra minute or two to get there, but it was, it was super exciting. But that was the, that was the, the world we were living in is like, we were doing things like I was doing something that maybe one to two percent of people had done at that point yeah. in the United States, and it was still I was still behind uh, other people who worked there because we were just all doing all the things all the time. Yeah, yeah, it was. I mean, I I I certainly learned a lot. I I there, there were definitely things where I was like, I'm teaching the world about this on the show today, live in five minutes, and I learned it ten minutes ago. <laughs> Yep. <laughs> you know, and like, I know what I'm doing, but I really did just learn this. I mean, yeah. it was, it was free education. Well, not free education t- to be paid for. Um, 
in pennies, I guess. But it, I don't know. It, 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 I, 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 I think of that time very fondly. Uh, there's one question that I know people will have uh, at, who who visited TechTV.com uh, because as as the person who ended up running TechTV.com content, uh, it was uh, always at the top of my list of most trafficked pages, the Sarah Cam. Yeah, <laughs> the Sarah Cam, and this was not even a live webcam. No, it was, I think it refreshed every ten seconds. Something like that. Yeah, something like that. It just took a still picture, uploaded it to a server, and then showed up on our website. And it, yeah, it was just like a link that I don't know got popular. Here's the thing: I was not the only person who had a webcam at her desk, and in fact, I had a webcam at my desk before you ever saw me on the screensavers. Mm -hmm. I didn't. I had not. Uh, I had not been sort of some front-facing personality. But I was enthusiastic about it because I was like, this is going to be fun. We'll like, you know, we'll decorate my cube. And Megan Maroney uh, sat right behind me. And so like, you know, she'd come and say hi. And it was um, just sort of a silly thing. And then, um, and then I got a taste. And then I was like, <laughs> you better put me on television, people. And so, yeah, and that was sort of the beginning of that. I don't know why it was, I really just, mostly just sat there looking at my computer it was not that compelling but well, i think i think it was the novelty of it yes. of like oh yeah. i'm seeing one of the people on the team working like it, you right. know that now that feels like that it's the opposite now now people would be like that's creepy that's sur workplace surveillance you you shouldn't do that what are the privacy implications but the fact that you could do it at all was the point then and yeah. and that you were you were excited about it that you were like yeah let's do this like i i'm i'm cool with that yeah. and we weren't showing your screen or anything no, and like you said it wasn't no a screen. live stream it was just and, and I, I think you know for a lot of people who are like wait so it was like it was like a twitch stream but not even really live it's like yeah, there was no the live you had thing. To go, we you we had weren't to go to the, yeah, you had ready to go for to the that yet. Page. And yeah, I don't and remember. He, and the page how would refresh. Fresh. The, the page auto refreshed, which is one of the secrets for why it was so highly trafficked, because it kept getting page views, you know, as people stayed on it. But people would stay on it. Um, yeah, and I, you'd write a little something to like, hi, I'm eating salad today for what? <laughs> like, so yeah, stupid. Yeah. Like, but it was, it was like. I don't it, remember how we ended up with that. Early days of blogs. How we like, ended up with that, those cameras? Yeah, do you? Yeah, so the idea was we wanted to get more traffic to the websites. Sure. Well, yeah, and, always. And, oh, no, but but right. I remember the meeting, and one of the ideas, I think Henry Kaiser and someone else pitched is just like, why don't we show them what goes on behind the scenes? Uh, okay. Because people right. want to see that. Uh -huh. stuff and so whoops originally they uh they did a test cam on call for help where we had uh, a pair of uh, we had a pair of fish in a fish bowl that um oh right i forgot about the fish cam. segment and then yeah. we said like why don't we just put the camera on them and see if people enjoy it and it did and they said well, well why don't we just expand this out to other stuff why don't we expand it to the screensavers expand yeah. it out to fresh gear why don't we expand like it out fish to and mm -hmm. sarah yeah. yeah, yeah. I think it was. I think the original idea was like, oh, some of the employees, if if they want to participate, it was not mandatory. But if you no, want no. to, like, you kind of get like, oh, I get the webcam for the week, you know. So it would be like, oh, it's Sarah week, or it's Morgan oh, week, or it's Prager okay. week, or whatever. Because I, 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 I think that's if, how it all started. That's how it and started. Then, yeah. And then I was the one who was like, no, I'm not giving up this camera. Because Morgan had one. And then yeah. she didn't. Mm -hmm. She didn't want to do it anymore. Uh, she was like, "Yeah, it's just." I don't think it was creeping her out. She was just like, "It's too much pressure." Yeah, made, made her think. So she ended up getting rid of hers. Kevin had one. I feel like probably, but I don't remember if or when he stopped having I think, it. I think most people were just sort of like, "Oh, you know, Sarah, just keep it on Sarah's desk." Yeah, we I think don't, the we reason don't need yours... to like overthink this very much anymore. Well, and I think the reason cuz we had multiples. I remember there were multiples in there, but I remember yours was often at the top of the the traffic charts and the reason was that you did things that were fun. And so people were like, "Oh, I want to see what Sarah's doing." Like, you know, right, she's got right. decorations or eating salad or <laughs> yeah. a, It's a it's a particular type of voyeurism that you find with people who 
follow celebrities on social media. It's like, oh, oh well, what? Th- I mean, not even celebrities anymore. Yeah. Like the we again, we were doing yeah. all the things that are common now before yes. they were before they were new. And, Very much. and na- yeah. now people are like t- streaming themselves sleeping on Twitch. You know, they're not even celebrities, and it's the same principle. You know, it people is. just like and to see other people. Sometimes do stuff. it sticks. Yeah. yeah, I think I think <laughs> Sarah Cam for whatever reason was like, it just. I don't know. People were, they were into it, and and I didn't feel creeped out about it at all. Um, I don't <laughs> don't think I would do the same thing today, all day. But uh, who knows? You know? Well, we are trying to drive traffic to DailyTechNewsShow.com. Well, so. Tom, I'll take one for the team then. <laughs> Stream it the up. Otis Cam is born. And we'll just do it like really old school where it's like, no, it only refreshes every 10 seconds <laughs> Once every and it's just a still seconds. image. <laughs> yeah. It's a still image of Otis <laughs> yeah. sleeping. Just gives you a taste. That's yeah. all you need. It's just a taste. Uh, well, that is a taste of our memories of tech TV. We could probably talk all day uh, about this, but uh, I hope uh, you folks enjoyed that. Uh, really, really appreciate you supporting us all year long. Indeed. Thanks to everybody who supports DTNS this year and hopefully many years to come. Thank you to all of you. Speaking of patrons, you know you can catch the show live Monday through Friday at 4 p.m. Eastern. That's 2100 Starting UTC. In, you know, CES, uh, January 3rd. Yeah. We'll be back live January 3rd. Right. We'll be- this particular show is not live. Spoiler! You can find out more at dailytechnewsshow.com slash live. However, we do have a fun show coming to you tomorrow. We'll be back with our tech predictions for 2022 results show with Shannon Morse and Nika Monford. We're all going to see what we got right and what we got wrong. Talk to you then. This show is part of the Frog Pants Network. Get more at frogpants.com. Diamond Club hopes you have enjoyed this program. <laughs>